Good day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to discuss complex numbers and their components. So in this topic we're going to introduce the set of complex numbers. We will define the real and imaginary components of a complex number. We will define what a real and an imaginary complex number is. We will describe the rectangular representation and the preferred representations of various complex numbers. And we will define the equality of two complex numbers. Recall that in the last topic, we introduced j as being defined as the square root of negative 1. So j squared is equal to negative 1. In taking the square root of a negative number, we see that, for example, the square root of one hundred, negative 100 can be written as the square root of 100 times negative 1. Now, the square root of 100 is positive, so it's just a scaling factor, so it can come out, so we have that that is equal to the square root of 100 times the square root of negative 1, which is equal to 10j. Recall that if alpha is greater than 0, then the square root of alpha is greater than 0, and thus if alpha is greater than 0, we can always take the square root of alpha out from the product under the square root. Note that we will see that in general we cannot take or separate out a square root as follows. We can only do this if either alpha is greater than 0, beta is greater than 0, or both. For example, I could write 10 as the square root of 100, but 100 is also negative 10 times negative 10. However, if I was to write that as the square root of negative 10 times the square root of negative 10, we would see that that would actually work out not to 10, but rather to negative 10. So for the square root, we can only take out something from underneath the square root if that is positive. Thus, let's use this to calculate what the roots are of this quadratic polynomial. Here's the quadratic formula, and let's plug in the coefficients and work out 4ac. All right, let's combine what's under the square root. And now let's expand and also write what's under the square root as a product of a positive number times negative 1. We can now simplify the real component and expand the two square roots. The square root of 36.44 is 6.2. And so thus we have that the roots of that quadratic polynomial are 2.7 plus or minus 3.1 j. Now we will define a complex number as any number that can be written in the form alpha plus beta j where both alpha and beta are real numbers. Recall that the, we represented the set of all real numbers by a bold-faced r. We will represent the set of all complex numbers by a bold-faced capital C and c is defined as all alpha plus beta j such that alpha is a real number and beta is also a real number. Now, suppose that z is a complex number of the form alpha plus beta j where alpha and beta are real. We will define the real component of z as being alpha and the imaginary component of z as being beta. It's important to note here that the imaginary component is a real number. If this comes up again, I will re-emphasize this. But again, the imaginary component is beta, not beta j. So, for example, if z is equal to 3.2 minus 5.7 j, then the real part of z is 3.2 and the imaginary part of z is negative 5.7. Similarly, if w is equal to negative 4.8 plus 1.9j, the real part of w is negative 4.8 and the imaginary part of w is 1.9. A complex number that has an imaginary component that is equal to 0, that is z is equal to alpha plus 0j, we're just going to say that that complex number is, quote, real, unquote. Similarly, a complex number that has a real component equal to 0, that is, z is of the form 0 plus beta j, 
we will say that that complex number is, quote, imaginary, unquote. Notice that zero is both real and imaginary. Now, when a complex number is written in the form alpha plus beta j, where alpha and beta are real, we say that this is the rectangular representation of that complex number. Some examples of rectangular representations include all of these, including sine of 1.8 minus the square root of 2.9j, because both the real component and the imaginary components are reals. Now, the square root of negative 1.44 is complex, but its rectangular representation is 1.2j. Now, we do have some preferred forms of writing complex numbers. For example, if we're writing down 0, we will just write 0 rather than writing down, for example, 0 plus 0j. Zero if a complex number is real, we'll leave off the imaginary component and just write it as alpha. If it is an imaginary complex number, we will just write it as beta j rather than 0 plus beta j. And if the imaginary component is negative, we'll write it as alpha minus beta j rather than alpha plus negative beta j. It's just cleaner that way. Now, the reason that we put j after the imaginary component is because that's generally what you would write in MATLAB. So in MATLAB, we would write 3.2 plus 4.7j as exactly that, 3.2 plus 4.7j. Now, when are two complex numbers equal? Two complex numbers z and w are equal if and only if their real components are equal and their imaginary components are equal. In other words, if z is equal to alpha plus beta j and w is equal to gamma plus delta j, then z equals w if and only if alpha equals gamma and beta equals delta. So for example, these two numbers are not equal because the real components are not equal. These two components complex numbers are not equal because the imaginary components are not equal. These two are not equal because on the right hand side the imaginary component is 0, not 5.7. And these two numbers are not equal because the real component of the right hand side is 0, while the real component of the left hand side is 3.2. Thus, in this topic, we've introduced complex numbers. We've defined the set of complex numbers denoted by a bold-faced capital C. We've defined the real and, com and imaginary components of a complex number and defined a complex number with zero imaginary component as being real and a complex number with zero real component as being imaginary. We've described the rectangular representation and seen that there are certain preferred representations of various complex numbers, and we've concluded by defining the equality of two complex numbers. Here are some references, acknowledgements, the colophon, and a disclaimer. Cheers!